All right, so Dave Ramsey recently just put out a video, and I'm going to throw the clip on the screen right now. I buy mutual funds. That's all I do. And, and real estate that I pay cash yeah. for. That's all I do. I built 100% of my wealth doing that. Now, full disclaimer, this may not even be advice. It may just be him explaining what he does in his investing philosophy. But either way, I think people are going to misconstrue this as advice, or maybe it is advice. I don't really know. But anyways, I'm going to do a video on why I don't like this investing philosophy. <music> I'm Matt Agent Kelly. I talk about Canadian real estate in my local market of Abbotsford and the Fraser Valley. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and if you want to chat, you can do so by booking yourself into my calendar with the link in my description. All right, so in this clip, he basically says that he's built 100% of his net worth by buying properties in all cash and investing in mutual funds. So some background on Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey was a real estate agent back in Tennessee in the 1980s. He acquired real estate valued at $4 million using his company, Ramsey Investments. He acquired the properties over a short period of time between his graduation from the University of Tennessee in 1982 and 1986, at which point he says his holdings were valued at $4 million. The bank holding the financing on his properties merged with a larger bank who demanded full repayment of his loans, which led him to filing for bankruptcy in 1988. Basically, what I think happened here is he owned all of these properties, and I don't know what the market was doing in 1988, but I'm going to assume that it was down below what he purchased that portfolio at, meaning when the bank recalled his loans, he would either have to find another lender to give him a loan for those properties, but if the properties were worth much less than what he paid and he had no investment in those properties, any lender isn't going to lend on a property if there's no down payment involved. Like they're not gonna lend 100% loan to value or 125% low to value if you're underwater on those properties, meaning he had to sell those properties to repay the loans, which led to him filing for bankruptcy. Or maybe the lenders just took the properties off his hands completely and sold them on the market. Either way, he owed a bunch of money that he could not repay and he then filed for bankruptcy. So obviously this was a really painful experience for Dave, uh, as it would be for anybody. And because of that, now his investing philosophy has completely shifted to err on the side of safety. Before he was full risk on, 100% risk on, now he's 100% risk off, wanting no debt whatsoever. According to Google, Dave Ramsey makes $15 million a year. So with an income like this, you can pretty much buy any investment so long as the returns are higher than inflation. And they may not even have to be higher than inflation. You pretty much just have to park your money somewhere and uh, you'll grow your net worth. So this philosophy isn't exactly going to help the average everyday person because the average everyday person is not making $15 million a year. Now there's nothing wrong with buying properties completely cash outright. And there's some markets even in the States and maybe even in Canada where this philosophy might actually yield you a decent return. However, if you're in a market like mine, for an example, the cap rate on your typical newer one bedroom condo in Surrey Central is 3.5%. Basically the cap rate is the gross income minus all the expenses excluding your mortgage payment and then you divide that by the purchase price and that gives you your cap rate. And not only that, you're going to need to save up $500,000 before you can even buy one of these condos. And not only that, but a cap rate doesn't include things like vacancies, maintenance and repairs, and it doesn't account for the fact that your expenses are going up every single year. And in this market, you can't actually raise the rent on your tenants. So your income stays the same and everything else is going up. So it's not even really a true 3.5% cap rate. It's probably more like, you know, in a couple years, it'll be a 2% cap rate or a 1.5% cap rate. Now, obviously our market appreciates like a juggernaut. So even if you bought properties for cash, you'd probably still get a decent return, but on a spreadsheet, it looks terrible. So back when I was making a hundred grand a year as a plumber and I didn't have to pay for any of my gas because I had a service vehicle. So that saved me about $6,000 a year uh, to make six grand cash. I would probably have to make like nine grand because I'm going to pay tax. So I was making about 110 grand a year uh, comparatively as a plumber. And at the end of the year, I would save, you know, roughly around $15,000, give or take some. And 100 grand or 110 grand a year was a pretty high salary. That would put me in the top 2% of wage earners in Canada, or at least close to the top 2%. And I'm only saving 15 grand every year. And at that rate, it would take me roughly 33 years to save up enough money to buy one condo in Surrey Central cash. 
And you and I both know 33 years from now, a condo in Surrey is not gonna be 500 grand. It's probably gonna be like $1.5 million. Now you could make the argument that during that 33 year span, if I was investing in Dave's mutual funds, I would save up that cash payment a lot quicker and you may be right, but it's still way too long. The thing that makes real estate so great is that you can leverage your money five times safely. Meaning if this 500K condo goes up 50 grand, it's not actually a 10% return it's a 50% return because you only have 100K invested and then you're leveraging the other 400,000. Dave got burned really bad in the 80s with debt and this is why he's so against it now. And obviously I get it because leverage goes both ways. If the market's coming down, you're losing your money five times faster. But in that event, at least the tenant is just paying down the mortgage and you can hold through the downturn and you're still getting a return. You're taking away the leverage when you buy a property cash. Not only that, you're also losing some of the tax advantages. So here in Canada, we can write off the interest portion of the mortgage payment, which the tenant is paying anyway. So you write that off, you get some money back uh, after you file your taxes. And in the States, this strategy is even worse off because I believe there you can write off the tax and the principal, meaning you're writing off income that you're making and keeping. Obviously consult an accountant, but this is something that I've heard. And something that the rich understand very well and how they've gotten so rich is by using something called OPM, which is other people's money, which is debt. And the reason why debt is so powerful is with inflation, our dollar gets devalued every year. Let's just say inflation's 3%. Your dollar goes 3% less far than it did the year previously with inflation. Well, this actually helps you if you're carrying debt because the debt you have, the balance of it is actually worth 3% less every single year. So if you're holding 100 grand worth of debt, the following year, that debt is actually worth 97,000 in today money because next year you're gonna be paying it off with cheaper dollars. Now imagine what happens to the balance of your debt over 10, 15, 20 years. So you would be silly not to have debt on your property if you're completely starting with zero dollars. Now obviously if you're, you know, you, you have a high income, you have a high net worth, and you just don't want the headache or you want the peace of mind of not having debt on your balance sheet, then it makes sense. And I'll probably do that later on in life. But in the beginning, when you're trying to scale up your net worth as quickly as possible, so you can be sitting on a beach in your 40s or 50s, you need to have debt, not financial advice. Because if not, you're losing the leverage, you're losing the tax advantages, and you're losing the concept of debt erosion. So anyway, for anybody new getting into the investing world, I would never recommend not buying property without debt. If that makes sense, that a double positive, double negative, whatever. Just, I, I would recommend that you use debt to buy property in the very beginning. This is not financial advice. This is what I've done. This is what 83% of millionaires in the United States have done. And of course, be safe with your money while you're doing this, right? And uh, oh yeah, mutual funds suck. Just buy ETFs and index funds. Anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like this video. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.